I've been dreaming of this, of this opportunity to have a boyfriend for the longest time. I was willing to do anything to make it work. Really, honestly, I remember thinking to myself, I must look really good while I'm crying right now. Hi, I'm Merle, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I learned to move on. The story starts with my first relationship. I was 17 years old. I didn't have any dating experience in high school. I was actually quite an awkward child for a very long time. I was also taller than everyone, so uh, that could be tough. This was over a summer, right? The summer after my senior year of high school. I was about to go off to college. I had been dreaming of this, of this opportunity to have a boyfriend for the longest time. It was very exciting for me. So. I was fully in it with this guy. And you know, it was very passionate because it was my first love. I gave 125%. I didn't really expect much from him. He was, he's a great guy, but you know, he didn't know how to be a boyfriend, just like I kind of didn't know how to be a girlfriend, but I was better at it than he was. Anyway, so very passionate, very sweet. We opened up to each other a lot. I was convinced that this was like something very special and something that only I was experiencing. And um, I was willing to do anything to make it work. Honestly, I feel like I was like, the catch. Whatever. Uh, so I was like, he, you know, he's gonna want to put in everything he can to, to make this thing happen. Because when you're in your first relationship, in your first love, you don't believe they're going to end. Yeah. Um, so it was like this magical summer. All kinds of things were happening. I felt like I had this like once in a lifetime love and then the summer came to a close. He had been pretty honest with me that he wasn't willing to do long distance because he didn't think it would work, but I kind of thought I could talk him into it. You can't. <laughs> and you shouldn't. You should never have to talk someone into dating you. It doesn't work. I really was pulling out my best work. I was crying. I was sighing. I was looking longingfully into his eyes. There was all kinds of dramatics. Don't go, like stay, because I was going to go off to college the next day. He was crying too. Like it was beautiful but it wasn't enough for him to not break up with me. So of course I left on this very dramatic note walking out the door. I was like, just don't talk to me then. Like, I just don't want to even talk to you. And um, I left sobbing. I was devastated because we had agreed this was perfect and this was special and this was our thing. And now he didn't want it to be our thing anymore. Um, I didn't understand that. I took it very personally. And I was driving home. I drove stick shift at the time. There's no reason for you to know that other than I just think it's cool. I'm from the middle of nowhere in 1100 person town. So like I was cruising. The speed limit is like 50 suggested. It's really like 70 on these long winding roads. I'm shifting. I'm listening to, I don't know, probably like Alanis Morissette, the cranberries. Oh my God, the cranberries. No need to argue. <laughs> oh my God. God. Yeah. So that was playing on repeat in my car. I'm cruising. I'm crying. It's getting real. And I see something in the road up ahead, like probably like a hundred meters ahead. And so I pull over, I get out. I see this teeny little baby Fisher cat, which get a very bad reputation, by the way. When they're babies, they're super, super cute. Its mom had been hit by a car. So it was just like slinking around the road, like in circles, didn't know where to go. So obviously I'm like, all right, I've got to figure out how to save this thing. Still crying. So I go back to my car, I get a sweatshirt and I'm sobbing and I'm like, I'm like throwing the sweatshirt over the little Fisher cat in the road. There's cars going by. I'm missing it with the sweatshirt. I'm angry at my life. I'm angry at the Fisher cat. I'm angry at my boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. And finally, I'm like, tr I'm throwing it over this thing, throwing it over this thing. I'm like, they could have rabies, I don't know. And I'm just like mortified and I'm so upset and it feels like everything's gonna end and I have to go to college and I don't wanna go to college. I don't wanna start over. I don't wanna have new friends. Finally, I'm like, all right, the sweater method isn't gonna work. I'm gonna go back to the car. I'm gonna call my mom, have her help me. She's like, I'm on my way. So I walk back to where the little Fisher cat was and it's gone. Now I'm even more upset. I'm looking everywhere. I'm like, where is the little Fisher cat? Where's the baby Fisher cat? And I can't find it anywhere. And so then I'm of course crying again. Now for the Fisher cat, now for myself. Finally, my mom gets there. I leave, we go home, can't find the Fisher cat. I'm devastated. Cry to my mom all night. The next day I have to go to school. My mom and I are driving down that road and I'm just thinking about how things are not gonna get better and I don't, like what's happening and then we go by where the fisher cat was and I could see the spot where the mom fisher cat got hit and then I see the baby fisher cat dead in the road 
I just unleash. I'm just like furious. I tell my mom, I'm like, this isn't fair. Life isn't fair. I don't understand. Why doesn't he love me? Why does this Fisher cat have to die? My mom's like, Jesus Christ, thank God you were leaving for college. So I had this long four hour drive with my mom where I just kind of like got it all out, stopped being in my head about why these things were happening to me and I twisted it into this crazy metaphor like with this Fisher cat, which was that if you linger around the pain, and if you hang back and you don't move on and you just skip in circles in the road, you're gonna get hit by a car. But as a dating lesson, don't stay with people that aren't dying to be with you because it's not gonna work. I think the lesson of moving on has been the most pivotal one for me because things aren't gonna go your way. People aren't gonna love you enough, but as long as you do, it's okay.